Um, you found me at a funny time because I've been through a lot of different stages. I'm releasing a poetry book in about August and through writing that book, I've come to understand a lot about myself, just tracking the changes in my poetry. There were three main stages in, I'd say, the past five years. Growing up, I was very angry. I didn't realize I was angry because I wasn't like cutting off pigeons' heads or anything. So I felt like I was normal. <laughs> See how low it's setting the bar there for norm normalcy. Um, but from school, I did something that my teachers didn't think I would do, and I went to Cambridge University. That was a big step in my life. And I was kind of given this burden. I was given this role as like representative. And I didn't understand if I was a representative or a delegate. You see, a delegate just goes out and says what you told him to say. A representative is supposed to take initiative in representing where they're from. But the problem is, I knew that there's a lot of misunderstanding about where I was from. And I was angry, because I had seen a lot of shit that just pissed me off. And coming from where I was from, there was no redress of grievances, there's no insurance policy. There's nothing to take care of you when things go wrong. You just kind of deal with it and absorb the hit. Pierre Bourdieu is a sociologist. He said, um, we exist in relation to our social ties. So you'll never understand me without looking at where I'm from and some of the local guys. I'm the exception to the rule. The only one in year six who gets into a school that at the time isn't already under a warning since Ofsted declared it was underperforming. So you can imagine the wonder and awe when little George's post finally comes in the morning. They're screaming, they're shouting, there's thunderous bawling at my letter of acceptance from the school. I'm the exception to the rule. The problem is that's not what I wanted. It's not like I felt scared to be there, but it was far from home in more ways than one. And all my friends were elsewhere to be fair. That was my first real lesson and opportunity. Save yourself or get left in a lost community. Even though I saw myself and my friends, if I stayed there, I couldn't be much help for my ends. See, all reality is a construct. We exist in relation to other guys and girls. So I had to move to a better reality from one where everyone tries and fails. I can't say I live to regret the decision. A lot of them are now dead and in prison. After growing up, too fast from a young age, having to supplement their mum's wage, leaving school early to make easy money because in their eyes education doesn't amount to much, getting into trouble, coming out of trouble, but the world's moved on, now they're out of touch. Just as serious as everyone else, without as much experience as everyone else. And anyway, what sort of vocation is eager for people that report to probation? In a job market hampered by fear, aggression, and a severe recession, the absolute dream is a clear profession with even the slightest prospect of career progression. So here's the question. Who deserves a job? Some benefits recipient labeled a worthless slob, or worse, a yob. Society treats the hard to reach like a single subversive mob, but the, the inconvenient truth is that everyone brings something to the table. Everyone wants to be appreciated for what they bring to the table. There's no point putting them in a flat and giving them cable when there's work to be done. We're ready, willing, and able. From watching your life being sucked away to waking up to a structured day with structured pay, coming home to a structured night, building your life on a construction site. You see, all reality is a construct. We exist in relation to our social ties. Because no matter what you see around you, the real world happens when you close your eyes. You don't have to compromise yourself for your salary. You don't have to jeopardize your health or your sanity. You have the right to be a blessing, not a burden. Find purpose in service. Be a help for your family. If we forget how outcast the voice of an outcast is, they'll never be heard. Their words are just noises without answers. See, the fact is there are no choices without chances. So in practice, choices about chances. Thank you. <laughs>